The year is 1982. Nintendo had released their groundbreaking arcade game, Donkey Kong. The game was about a carpenter named Jumpman jumping over barrels and swinging hammers to save the damsel in distress from the evil Donkey Kong. By June of that same year, Nintendo had sold over 60,000 arcade units. Meanwhile, the president of Universal at the time, Sid Scheinberg, was trying to find an opportunity to enter the video game industry. Eventually, Sid came across Donkey Kong and its booming success and sent Robert Haddle, a lawyer from Universal, to investigate. His analysis was that the storyline in Donkey Kong was based on King Kong, thus being an infringement on Universal's rights to the characters and scenario of the game. Haddle also found a licensing agreement between Nintendo and Coleco. Coleco originally became a successful toy company in the 1980s, and in August of 1982, Coleco released the ColecoVision. Robert Haddle then scheduled a meeting with the president of Coleco, Arnold C. Greenberg, about investing in the company, but instead, he warned them for copyright infringement and threatened to sue if the ColecoVision was shipped with Donkey Kong. Haddle also found out that Tiger Electronics, a company that manufactures handheld LTV games, had also licensed a King Kong game. On May 6, 1982, the then president of Nintendo, Minoru Arakawa, and Nintendo's attorney, Howard Lincoln, met with Coleco and Universal in Los Angeles. Haddle claimed that Donkey Kong infringed Universal's rights to King Kong. Lincoln then explained that Nintendo had discovered many unlicensed uses of King Kong's names and characters before, and that the trademark of these were less than 10 years old. After the meeting was over, Lincoln decided to research more about Universal's claims to King Kong and couldn't find any useful information. Nintendo then scheduled another meeting set for May 21st. Scheinberg assumed that Nintendo was waving the white flag of defeat, but Lincoln only repeated Nintendo's position that Universal had no legal bias to make any claims or threats. He recalled later, Mr. Arakawa and I decided that we would go down and simply tell him that we've come to tell him to his face that we would pay him if we thought we were liable, but we had done our homework and we were not prepared to pay anything because we hadn't done anything wrong. We just wanted to essentially look him in the face and tell him that. It seemed the honorable thing to do and it was really funny because it was not what he was expecting and his reaction was shock. On June 29, 1982, Universal sued Nintendo, and on January 3rd, 1983, Universal then sent them cease and desist letters to Nintendo's licensees, offering three options. Stop using Donkey Kong characters, obtain a license from Universal, or get sued. Six licensees caved in, but Milton Bradley refused to. When Routes and Purina's offer at $5,000 for the use of DK rights on breakfast cereal was turned down, they also opted not to settle. Howard Lincoln then hired John Kirby to represent Nintendo in court. Kirby had previously won cases for Pepsi, General Foods, and Warner Lambert. Universal City Studios Inc. vs. Nintendo Co. Ltd. later took place at the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York by Judge Robert W. Sweet. The trial lasted seven days, during which Universal, represented by New York firm Townsley and Updike, argued that people could have mistaken Donkey Kong for King Kong and that the plot of the game was an infringement on the film. Kirby, however, showed major differences with Donkey Kong and King Kong. He also claimed that Universal had in fact sued the original creators, RKO General Inc., successfully when they proved that the plot of King Kong was in the public domain and thus opened a way for Dino D. Laurenti's remake in 1976. Judge Sweet ruled against Universal and said, Throughout this litigation, Universal knew as a result from the RKO litigation that it had no rights to any visual image of King Kong from the classic movie or its remake. Nonetheless, Universal, when it seemed beneficial, made sweeping assertions of rights, attempting to extract license agreements from companies incapable or unwilling to confront Universal's profit center. 
He ruled that Universal did not own King Kong, but even if they did own King Kong, the possibility of people mistaking King Kong and Donkey Kong was unlikely. Sweet declared that, at best, Donkey Kong is a parody of King Kong. Sweet then said that the cease and desist letters that they sent to Nintendo gave the company the rights to seek damages. So what happened in the end? Nintendo was given the choice of either taking Universal's licensing profits for the game or accepting statutory damages. Nintendo chose the former, receiving $56,689.41. Nintendo thanked John Kirby with a $30,000 sale boat called the Donkey Kong, along with exclusive rights to use the name for sailboats. The Nintendo character Kirby may have been named after him. It is also rumored that a copy of Kirby's Dreamland was sent to John Kirby, who was humored and flattered.